So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live people. Um, I've bought a colouring book called Have a Serene and Magical Christmas. And there's some quite nice um, pages in it. Some I, I, I like more than others, shall we say. But they've all got some potential. This particular one is a robin in front of a little nest surrounded by ivy and berries and holly berries. Um, so I thought I'd do the graphic tint because um, last year I did this particular one in my graphic tint and I used it as a, as a wet medium so I scratched a bit of colour and then manipulated it with a damp brush. So I had a lovely soft effect um, but I didn't damage the pages. <clears throat> So I thought I'd try something different um, and these look like they have a bit of a, a waxy kind of edge on them um, and I love these. I thought I'd try them as a pencil to blend and they're doing really well. So I thought I'd record really quickly how I do the little birds so we can um, have a look. So I think I used um, the autumn brown for the tummy. So because they're blunt there's no pencil lines, so I'm just going to scratch a little bit of colour. And these are not bright colours, these are muted colours. Um, and I'm not used to blending with pencils, so um, just be aware that... Um, I don't know if that should be brown. I don't think it should. We'll, just, well, we'll put that up here because then it'll match then. Um, so that one was autumn brown number 17 now there's only 24 colours in this set but I've scratched them on my little coloured water books I used them as a watercolour but I thought I would use this as a colour guide uh, because you can just see this end and it's not very revealing but you can get these lovely shades and tones so I use always nearly always use my little colour book of watercolours as a colour guide. Um, so I'm using the cold cocoa for down there, but I just thought um, these are all the greens. But there's a cool brown, and the cool brown I think I just want to kind of darken up the tummy. So it goes from this kind of brown colour. And as you get the second and third coat on, it just tends to blend quite nicely. So we've kind of got this little warm effect going on. Oh yes, Beth, she says they... They get a vintage effect. I wondered why I liked it. I'm a bit of a Victorian vintage girl, so that's probably why. Um, I love these. So again, they're not bright in your face neos. Uh, they're muted, and they're they're almost like a pencil with a hint of colour. That's probably the the easy, easiest way to describe them. So I'm going to carry that the same colour. So here it's got the red, and here it's got. And this is cool brown number 15. Um, and a very soft coat. Now, because I'm not adding water to these, I can actually use an eraser to give me a highlight. So I found a way to do that. So at the moment, there's quite a few things going on on this little page. Again, I want to build up this little red breast, like I did on the other one. Um, and I've never really used pencils apart from the last few days. So I thought, I wonder if these will give a nice effect. And my problem normally is, I don't like crinkled pages. And these pages were very thin. I was a bit disappointed. Love the images, but a bit disappointed. Um, but last week I started this with my new Derwent watercolour pencils, but not using them as a watercolour, using them as a pencil. And blending two colours, three colours, four colours together. Um, 
so I really like that effect. So I thought, oh yes, you can buy a watercolour pencil of good quality and you can manage to get a pencil out of it as well. Now if these were a bit cheaper, you probably wouldn't get the pigment. It's all about the pigment and that's normally what makes things expensive. <clears throat> so we've got a cocoa as well, so again, how can you not love something that's called cocoa? A very soft, gentle, just scratching the surface, which again is quite easy on the hands. So it's right up my street and just build a little bit of kind of colour up so that eventually we've kind of got a bit of a round bird rather than a flat bird. Oh, Suzanne says, don't forget about the graphic, the, the metallics that can be mixed with the graphic tint. Yes, I do have the metallics as well. Uh, sorry, I don't have them anymore. I gave them to my daughter because I didn't use them as much. Uh, but yes, I suppose you can make them a bit sparkly. I do tend to like this really dull kind of grungy, um, vintagey look though. I have to say I do. And I think that's why I like them. Um, sometimes things are easy to use and you just suddenly like something but you're not really sure why um, and I'm pretty sure it's because of this kind of I always like watercolour effects really soft watercolour effects and is this this is the cocoa so cocoa is slightly cooler than the cool brown. So again, if you're not sure which is which, we look up cocoa and cool brown. So cool brown is like a very dark, cool olive, and cocoa is it's 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 a darker brown, but it's not too cold. It's the warmest brown we have there, apart from the russet. Um, but I actually kind of like these together, so I might just keep these as they are. So cocoa is the warmer. I just want to warm this little bird up because he's looking a little bit... He's looking probably a little bit cooler than we'd want him to really. So again, just a very soft highlight on the bird. And I really had no idea you could do this with these, so it's a, it's quite a nice surprise. You normally get about three coats, and that's because these Derwents, I've, I watched the video of them being made, and the, the watercolours were usually dipped in a wax, and the wax was because it would help them adhere to the pages more. Um, but I haven't seen that in the new the new pencils. They seem to be a little bit chalkier. So perhaps they're not they're not dipped anymore. I don't really know. I haven't looked into it, so we'll have to find out. But again you can just bring that round so this little baby, this little rabbit, Robin's got a really round fat belly. And you can make some darks and lights. Oh, that sounds nice, Beth. Beth says, put a little bit of stickles on the berries. Ooh, that might be nice. And uh, where is my little stickles? I only have one. I buy, well, I think I've got three, but I tried to buy a clear. So you can put it on everything. I think I'm finished with this berry. Um, I did put a little tiny bit of black. So let's just put a little bit. I don't know if it's the right time to do it, but let's have a go. Um, so yes, I normally sprinkle something on something or other.
and the thing with the clear one is it shows every colour through so they've got little sparkly berries it's not very vintagey but um, that look quite nice especially when they're all over the place <laughs> yes so he's he, I don't know who this is then because <laughs> you'd think that's quite romantic there's two little robins there and they live there happily together and then of course hello who's this <laughs> Unless that's grandma. <laughs> that could be grandma. And I'm not sure what these white fluffy things are, but I work it out. I don't think it's snow. I think it's something, but my brain just won't work it out what it is. So here we've got three white things. It looks different. Yes, the metallics would work well, but I have given to my daughter, so they've got little sparkly berries. They look quite nice. I think I've finished those as well, so let's try there. Um, I put my stickles somewhere. I didn't shake the stickles. I don't know if you shake your stickles or not. Um, I think I've done this one. I don't want to go over because I want to get rid of that black line if I can. You can't always do it, but sometimes you can do it. So we've got stickleberries. So thank you, Beth. That was a brilliant idea. So my stickles are going to stay in my little drawer here now, safe, so I know where they are. <laughs> so I seem to have lost that little breast there. So what you can do, again, because you haven't put... Oh, that is a bit dirty but I'm sure it'll be fine but because we haven't activated it with water we can use a Derwent electric eraser and just highlight that bit of tummy and if we leave a little bit on the other side and then we need to go back over it with the right red Autumn brown. Just to soften it a little bit. So you can play about until you get it just right, but again, you know, that little. And the highlight on the head, I've lost that as well. So you can you can either finish everything and then go in with the highlight like I do with the pastels. Uh, but again, this is a different way of working because I don't normally work with dry pencils. So again, we can just get a bit of a highlight on there. And a highlight on the end of the feathers. And and that shows that it's a little round rope breast. Um, <clears throat> and we want a bright beak, and we don't really have a a bright so it have to be meadow meadows the brightest so we're going to have to have a little bit of a green beak going on which is unusual but it's the brightest thing we can have and if i make this quite dark here that would look quite nice so we've got the snow so i need to do the other birdie and unfortunately I need to do that so my stickles have dried oh, almost <laughs> so my little stickle berries have dried so we'll do our little bird and be although it's not it's not going to come off 
unless I have really sticky hands. It's sometimes a good idea to put a little bit of pen, uh, paper on there, but I'm sure we'll be fine. So a very soft, oops, wrong colour, a very soft um, autumn brown, number 17. Now I think I did put a little bit of the port in there just to warm that belly up because this is, um, I think I might do that. So the port is going to make the little robin red breast. And then we have cool brown and we have cocoa. our two browns. So we've got a, a warmer brown. And we've got to think about if you are more comfortable you can have A sharper point but I don't really sometimes like a point unless I need a very very sharp dark because it kind of it's a waste of paint for one or pigment and you don't get some nice soft little facets uh, that certainly don't start to um, give you sharp digging lines into everything. Everything's soft. And that's because I don't have any really, really sharp sharp colours. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this colder brown on top. And it's normally the second coat when the two colours blend together that things look a little bit nicer and you can kind of highlight certain things and make the little wings kind of round instead of Build just a bit more. To kind of make sure you've just got a little bit of a contrast in those. Both layers normally roughly where you you kind of think okay then <coughs> so the three different ways I have left that particular one there and then we can go back in here Um, and take now he's obviously higher up so he's going to be a lot kind of paler so you can use the edge
and you can kind of manipulate things up and down. And again, the autumn brown because we just want that tomato kind of be the same as the other ones but it's just not always stuck on top um, so again <coughs> You can either cut the end off your eraser or I save mine Oops. in the packet for when I'm doing other dirty things that I don't want a clean one and I take a clean one so that I can have a really crisp highlight. So now it, it's going to leave a stain, but some really nice highlights in there. It has some really nice highlights. Oopsie. <clears throat> and you could put highlights on just So they can have some really nice highlights. Oops, so he is the right colour, but it just looks slightly different. Um, let's see if I can. I can just blend him in a little bit nicer than that. Uh, so if you take off so much, sometimes you can just get. And sometimes you just have to use the black. I have a midnight grey and I have a midnight black. And just a touch of that midnight black. Gonna make that highlight pop. And it gets rid of that line as well. Then you shows you where your tail is. I think stickles take quite a while to dry, so probably not a good idea to put them on <laughs> before everything else is dry. Um, so that's made him stand out a little bit more, and just a little bit of midnight black. It's 
just to think about the shadows and the shades and what where they would be going and I must admit I do like to get rid of the black lines if I can and sometimes having a quite a dark colour is the only way to do it and I did put a little bit on the berries and remember it's soft because it's very very dark and it's cold is this this is very dark and very soft and um, very cold. But it will just emphasize a highlight. And again, you're not gonna notice this highlight and this highlight and this until you get here. So I'll do that really quickly. Um, so we'll think about that. Let me have a look. Sometimes it's a good idea to look back at your books um, that you've already coloured and think, well, I like that. Why do I like it? Um, I like the colours. So I've got um, two different browns there. Now, I've used olive on that, uh, but it's wood. So I'm going to pick the browns. Oopsie. So pick the browns. So remember, we've used the browns for the birds. So we've got to be a little bit careful. So we want a warm. So we've got a russet. So I think we'll use russet because we haven't used russet on the birds. So we'll get russet out and we've also got a chestnut as well um it's, i don't know if i like the chestnut but we've got russet i don't know what that one's called number 19 um there's a steel blue shadow do, 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 do. there's the green gray um the russet and the green gray are quite cool And I think they might look quite nice. So we've got, I think chestnut's a bit red. Chestnut's just that bit warm. And I don't really want that to be warm now. Um, just trying to think. It could be warm. But I think I'll use russet and I'll use green, green grey. Because green grey is quite... Oh, I have used green grey, have I? I use green grey for something. There's a mountain grey. That's probably a mountain grey is mountain grey is a bit cool, but it would be nice for shadows. Now I have one called shadow, but it's it's a green, so I don't want to use that. Um You've just got to think a little bit about colour because you don't have as many. So I want green grey. Now I've used green grey for something. Um not quite sure what it's for. Oh, well, green grey is too green, so that one's out. So again, I think I'm going to use um, Midnight Black. Let me just have a quick look at Storm. Which is storm? Storm is can't find storm now. Oh, there's storm. Storm is a bit. Storm is a bit purple. Um, no, I'm not going to have that. So I've got three colours. Um, I've got mountain grey. I was going to have mountain. I've got black, russet, and I need cool brown, I think. Cool brown would be good. So the warmest colour is russet. So I think I'm going to have to put the russet on here. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it in, oh, I might do it in streaks, let's have a look. I could do it in, in planks rather than streaks, but in wood grain.
this is just a blanket cover really. Sometimes it's quite nice just to get everything covered. And this is a warm tone so the outside bit can be cooler but this is going to be a warmer bit. And sometimes because certain colour books and pages aren't a different, you've got to change sometimes how you use things. So um, there's different ways to, to use certain products, certain things. Right. I think that's the end of this so because what happens now to the little birds when you get this brown behind and then of course we now see this highlight that we put in earlier and this low light and then I really want the black lines to disappear but I'm not sure I'll be able to do that these are pretty thick lines at the top um, so we've got this <clears throat> nice brown and we haven't used it for the birds I don't think and it's called russet but it's not very russety so that's quite nice so we've got a very pale very pale colour um, so the next thing we can do And I've started this now. I would have done this in a different colour. It's just to start picking out a few little things. And I have a bit of a point on this one. I really would have liked to have done it a different colour but I'm just going to do this for a second and then I'm probably not going to bother under here this is going to be quite dark so I'm probably not going to bother too much. So we've got, a, again, another little bit of a contrast. And then we had cool brown. So cool brown is going to be the one that I want to go in the middle now. <coughs> and I'm going to have to sharpen with my new Coom automatic long point. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to take quite a lot off. So the number one takes it to, takes the wood off. Um, and then the number two takes it to a point. Now I haven't taken it too far, because I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. But what I want is, I need a really nice, and I can't press down because I'll snap it. So I've just got to do soft, soft lines. And if you keep turning the brush, sorry, the, pe the, the pencil nib, if you keep turning it, you will always keep your point. And uh, I was saying earlier that 
somebody's brought out a mechanical pencil that every time you push down it turns the nib so you never get a blunt I think it's Pilot but I couldn't swear to it I think it's a Japanese, it might be a Japanese firm that every time you press down it turns the mechanical nib round, the pencil lead round and so it never goes blunt um, but if you did it with your ordinary pencils you're not going to keep your very sharp point but you can have a good effect and that's what I'm looking for here so already beginning to look like it, the rounded pieces of, of planks of wood so I've got the mountain grey and I've got midnight black um, but I'm going to take the russet again um, so it looks a little bit grainy but not too bad and I'm just going to do a very soft blend and by this time this is when everything kind of moves together So these planks just don't look horrid. They look like they belong to each other. They are glued to each other, and but they are separate pieces of wood or they have grown differently. And then this is where we think of a bit of shadow. So I want soft round here. This is the first layer, so we get this layer down and what we've done is we've blended two of those colours together. Um, so you've made the lightest, coolest a bit, darkest, coolest a bit warmer and lighter and you've made the lightest, warmest a bit cooler. So you've brought the two colours together. So we've got an overall effect. And then in here, we want this warmth, but I am going to darken it up. So we've got a bit of warmth. And then when you put black over it, it's going to be warm. It'll be a warm black. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. It's called, the, the pencil that it turns round is called a Uni Kuru Toga. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, I only had a quick flick at, at the sight of it and um, missed most of it. So... Um, I can now put um, I think I'm going to do should I do this one again I'm going to do the cool brown again and this time I'm going to think about shade and where things are so under here it's going to be quite dark, but again, remember not to press on because you'll snap that lovely point we've got. But if you do snap it, you've got to save it, so because it's pure colour. So I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight here. it wouldn't be quite as dark as that um, this probably would but this one would definitely get a little bit of something and so that was cool brown so again um, where was that russet and you think that was cool brown um, so 
because this is this one's a bit cold this is cool brown so of course it's brilliant for shadows so you can build up a kind of shadow And you want a bit of a shadow. Under there. Kind of under there, but then we need some little bit of sprinkles of light. Now, I don't think any light's going to get under there, so we can make that dark. And by making this dark, this bow is going to pop out now. And then we're going to take our midnight black and have a bit of a I think we'll take our midnight black and I need to sharpen it unfortunately. And it's left me with a bit of a point so I want to get rid of this black line. So if I take it to the darkest, I can then gently blend it back and take this to the darkest. So that black line's disappeared, but then gently blend it back. And get rid of this line. And gently blend that back. So we're going to have a very dark line. This isn't a black, this is not a black, it's an extremely dark brown or a pale brown black. But it's not jet black, it's not what it says on the thing, it says midnight black and it's not midnight black. So we need a little bit of and the, the russet colour to show that this is the inside and that little bit of light is probably just hitting that little tiny bit of it there And 
and come back to the midnight black I will try the cool brown I think it's the coldest darkest one I've got cool brown I think I'm going to go for cocoa I'll see if we can find cocoa I've done cocoa I'm going to use cocoa it doesn't look as dark as cool brown but we'll have cocoa and I'm just going to Again, see if I can get Want it too light, but we do want a little bit, um, and again, in here, it's not going to be jet black. Now that little highlight on that bow is popping out now. Um, I think this should be too bright. And we seem to have lost the highlight on the little robin's head. I'm just bobbing that back in we've kind of uh, made it kind of I think I kept the cool brown to do the underneath outside wood. So cool brown and midnight black. So again, just you need a little bit of a contrast. If you had any white areas, uh, like the snow that's lower down, I'd be very careful. Be really careful about putting your hand on the white because it will smudge. I've smudged that now, so you can put a piece of tracing paper there or a piece of photocopy paper, any kind of cheap paper. And all the natural oils from your hands do not contaminate your work. We do have this little bit down here, but I want to get this first done. So, <clears throat> I do have a little bit of dark on my hand there. So it's probably a good idea to put a piece of tracing paper on here. Um, and I want to get, I really want to get rid of that snow line. So start black and then work down very carefully. And I 
again you've got a highlight there so that's got to be a low light and to emphasize that go back in and just take that off the same with that one just makes that light bounce back off the snow it gets rid of the black line it's a kind of bit of midnight black and just very carefully push it right up to that line And then we really want it on both sides if we can. Blend a bit of brown in there. It is a bit of a highlight, but it's also a reflected highlight. And then if you just want to make sure that that looks... Just slightly. Just put that in very gently. And in that way. And in that way. And then we want the midnight black again and we'll go under here. We want then just to take that across, but then have a smooth blend. And that, you see the difference, it just makes that snow pop out. So you want a light next to a white, light next to a dark, and a dark next to a light. And the more contrast you can get there, your whites are going to look whiter, your highlights are going to look brighter, and your shadows and lowlights are going to look darker. And then soften the whole thing up with that slightly warmer it's a cool brown but it is slightly warmer than black and then what we need to do is just put and we don't want it right near the edge because we want to get rid of that line but we just need a bit a bit of And then the cool brown, just steady. Knock that highlight down. So you don't always get your highlights first time. Just knock it back a little bit. So that highlight here can't be as bright as here because this is getting the original highlight. This is getting the bounce back. But again, because of that, it's making this look lighter and I can't seem to get that any blacker we do want that as a, as a light as a shadow and <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to do the background because the background we need a bit so that we can get this snow to pop up. Um, I do have a dark indigo which might look quite nice. I'm not sure about clouds and things but let's do the dark indigo under here. Because 
because again it's going to make that snow pop up so we've kind of got a bit of a sky going on oops I think that's snow yep that's snow I need to colour that in that's the snow over the oh no I don't think it is Um, I think that's I think. this is definitely background yeah sometimes you just have to step back a bit and have a look so a very very soft indigo dark indigo number four and it's already making that snow pop out so if that goes over there that goes to there I'm pretty sure that that goes around the leaves. And then we have this bit here. So I like the fact that once you've done it, it's kind of done. You don't have to go back. So I've got that. Now I've got the black, the midnight black. I think I'm going to stick with midnight black. And I'm just going to go around here. Just to get rid of that line. And then kind of blend it out a little bit. So if we keep this black. I would like it a little bit thinner than that, but got just a bit of a something going on in the background, but it's really going to make this pop if all this is going to be quite dark. So we've done quite a bit. I'll pan up and have a look. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Hope everybody's okay. So here we are so far. Let's see. Oh. It flashes up when it can't see what it wants to see, but... A bit. So we've got um, we've got some little birds, and we've got a little bit of green going on. So I think that looked quite nice. And of course, the only bit of white on there is going to be the snow. So that is really going to be uh, to lighten the page up, even though the rest of it's going to be quite dark. Um, and I don't normally work that dark, but I just thought it, it lends itself to that. These pencils lend themselves to these colours. So thank you for watching. And uh, that's the end of part one of the um, graffiti Tint Christmas page. Thanks for watching.